Tuesday night. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It is another DJ roundtable. And again, as always, we have some great DJs here. Uh, we're down one right now. Uh, he has a uh, little bit of stuff to do this evening. But hey, like anything else, uh, you know, again, we're all working DJs. We're all here to share our ideas, share our thoughts. And we're going to share some thoughts in a moment or two. Uh, we were talking a little beforehand. And actually, DJ Brantley was out at Mex, out in Vegas. Uh, he uh, had a fun time out there playing with the uh, photo booths and all the cool yeah. gear. As well as we have a lot of information here and a lot of stuff to go through. As always on Tuesday nights, we thank you all for being here. It's always great to have you on a Tuesday night. It is great to have you as well uh, watching on YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, please make sure you like, follow, and hit that bell icon. And also follow everyone here because everyone here has a YouTube channel. And they always have great stuff. Matt just had a great gig log for a corporate event. He was playing a little bit of uh, Spanish music there. I was watching that, grooving to that. Uh, DJ Brentley was, uh, had one also he let, released today. As well, he, if you're watching on social media, you could have caught DJ Brentley at the toad Omatic booth DJing a little bit along with other DJs. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, man, I know that guy. <laughs> And as well, make sure you follow the Moose. He's over there always dropping uh, that uh, those shorts over on YouTube with uh, Dan, that Moose. And would you play that at a uh, event? And, of course, Jeff with his great stuff, with his gig log. I just saw his gig log for the uh, little daddy-daughter dance. That was really, really awesome. Um, I, I got to tell you that, uh, Jeff, the uh, those uh, uh, those thumps actually sound really, really good in your mic. And it looked like the, everyone there enjoyed themselves, had fun. And as always, uh, and Mr. Dixon, not to sound bad, I've seen some stuff you're putting up there. Great stuff. The VR stuff was really cool. And he has also got a commercial for the show on his channel. So make sure you go see Mr. Dixon's uh, channel, you know, Hitman D-Dubs. And uh, go through and make sure you like, subscribe, follow everyone here. That is always greatly appreciated. And Jeff is also in the chat right now, too. So if you have a question for Jeff, you can ask him directly. Or you can ask directly on the show. We're more than glad to answer. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you click and ask a question down below. Hit the thumbs up. Like I said before, that helps the algorithm because the algorithm will always put us down because we're not a big channel, but that's okay. I want to make sure that we're giving information that, that we feel is great, that we try to do every single day. This is try true work that as working DJs and maybe give you a hit or a trick or help or something on a, a gig or event that you're doing with equipment, lighting, music, whatever. So with that said, off to the races. Uh, we we're talking a little bit about lighting beforehand. And uh, DJ Brentley, he uh, just posted on his uh, Instagram and Facebook and other social media about a new lighting rig he was doing. He went to Max, and he's like, ah, the tube lighting is uh, exciting. And I know I have it. I know Matt has it. Um, Jeff, you have uh, the tube lighting at, at all? Not yet, no. No? Um, I, I don't anticipate upgrading to that this year. Okay. Uh, Dwayne, do you have... Uh... Tube yeah. lighting? Yeah, I got the um J the was it J Mass, okay. the Glo um Galaxy Tubes. Okay. And then uh uh Terry, do you have uh do you have J Mass? You can't DMX those, can you? Nope. No. Uh, the ones I have, you can't DMX either. I like them because the kids like to fight with them. <laughs> well, I do have they're cheap. <laughs> I do have these are these are really, really inexpensive. I got the same ones. I got the same ones. These are really inexpensive Chinese ones. These are like two of them for 90 bucks. You can't DMX them. You can't do much with them. Other end charge them and turn them on. They have a little sound active thing. And one works, one doesn't work. Again, they're $99. They look cool. I, I bring them to wedding shows just so people get an idea. If I'm going to play, I'm going to use my Asteras um, for lighting. They throw much more light than these. It's just, uh, again... You get captured and someone knocks them over at a wedding show. I'm not worried. But we were talking a little beforehand. And uh, one of the things is with uh, the uplighting and lighting in, in particular, uh, we were having a little uh, discussion about uh, wash lighting. And my feeling of wash lighting is to treat it more like an uplight 
to create scenes around the room, onto walls, onto ceilings, and not really washing onto people because, again, I don't want a blind grandma. I don't want to make grandma deaf. But, uh, Matt, you said that uh, you want everyone blinded with flashing lights and sound in that uh, event. So when you do uh, wash lights, how do you uh, do your wash lights? Uh, I blind the crowd with them. Um, <laughs> I, I usually do them up high, pointed down on the whole dance floor. Um, I mean, I honestly, I want to wash the room and have everything. So my uplighting is DMX as well. So like when everything strobes, everything strobes. So like when dancing starts, I want all lights off in the venue. I hate when they leave lights on. Um, let me use a fog or a haze machine. Let me just do my light show and it just, it's going to be rocking. So, uh, I, I've never had anybody complain and say the lights are too bright and they're in their eye. You know, it's, uh, I, I'm moving to like a wash effects type style, um, because I'm just for simplicity sake, but you better believe they're going to be pointed down too. Uh, I don't see the point of washing a ceiling or a wall when that's what up lights do. I'd rather, I want to wash the whole room. So, um, I don't know. I, I've never had anybody complain, but I don't know. Don't look at the lights if they hurt your eyes. I don't know. <laughs> don't dance in my direction. Dance with facing the other way. I don't know. I have blinders too now, and uh, those are just as bright. And uh, those definitely get a reaction when I shine them at people, but they uh, they make an impact. And that that's, again, everyone does things differently. I guess because they're closer to Hollywood, you know, they're used to the, uh, the paparazzi and camera lights flashing everywhere. And, you know, especially some of the weddings you do, you have a lot of... Uh, a uh, lot of crowds, so I guess they're used to that uh, that that kind of Hollywood feel there out there in the California area. But one of the things is that also, uh, you know, every area is different. And just because I think it's, I don't think I I do that or Matt does something differently. This is all different ideas. We're all different DJs. We think things differently. Just because I think a certain way doesn't mean like Brettley's wrong or Jeff is wrong or or Terry's wrong or Dwayne's wrong or Matt's wrong or uh, 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 Tommy's wrong or whoever. It's one of the things that we're all sharing what we do and what we what we feel works best for us. So I'm gonna go to Jeff. Uh, when you do lighting and stuff like that, especially like again, I saw the uh, um, the daddy daughter dance you were doing and did some lighting for that. Uh, you do a lot of indirect lighting and you didn't do any wash really any wash lighting, uh, but you did have some up lighting. You had some great lighting in the room, and you could feel the energy for the dance floor. And I know you had your GoPro up behind you, which uh, covered basically uh, probably ninety percent of the room. Uh, how do you feel? How do you do your lighting? What, what do you do? You think you want to wash the the floor? Do you want to wash the walls more? Uh, do you want more like dance lighting onto the floor? Well, how do you do it? Well, it depends first what the client wants and what they want to pay for. Um, but after that, um, I have several options and. You know, it's um, it usually starts. The minimum is up lighting, uh, and I'll throw about sixteen lights around. You know, up under uh, my booth, um, depending on which speakers I'm taking, either under the uh, the speaker stands or beside the uh, line arrays uh, or the column arrays, um, and then you know around the front of the room where I'm set up or around the corner or whatever, whatever the venue uh, will, will have. Um, and then from there, I will add wash uh, for the crowd with my wash effects twos, um, or I will go with, uh, you know, your basic, you know, just uh, moving heads, got a couple of different types of those, got the smaller one and the larger one, depending on the size of the room. And everything's DMX, you know, just kind of like what, uh, you know, Solstice said. It's, you know, if, you, if you're if you like a slow song, I'll make everything blue. And uh, if I've got moving heads, you know, they'll just constantly, you know, go back and forth very slow across the top of the heads uh, with a nice blue. Uh, they all strobe together. Uh, you know, they, they do all those things together. But it's all, it, it depends on the song. It depends on the venue. It depends on the client. So uh, you got to have all options. Uh, I don't bring all those options to any one event. Um, they usually um, will bring a minimum of uplighting. 
and then I will determine if I need or if the client can afford um, you know, any lighting after that. And for this particular one you were referring to, yeah, that uh, uh, it was a yeah, just a bargain basement. You just come and play music. And uh, sometimes they used to have that in the afternoon. So it would be a light. Uh, you, you know, lights were not really needed. Uh, the past couple of years, they've done it at night. So uh, I bring the up lights and uh, I brighten up the room a little bit. It just makes it look better. Yeah, it was, it, again, everyone I see when they do stuff, I will tell you, everyone I look at and I watch, it's like just amazing. It's just like, okay, I, I I always feel I need to step my game up more when I see you guys do stuff. And it just, it, it amazes me on uh, things that uh, we do similar and some, and some things you guys do a little different. And it's like, oh, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of doing that. And it's just, it's always fun. Uh, two really quick questions for you. Oh, actually one question and then one comment for you, Jeff. First thing first, do you ever take the golf cart uh, to a gig with a uh, gear or <laughs> that's just around the neighborhood? No, no, no. That's just uh, to the pool during the summer for me and the kids. Um, and when I'm working a gig, I uh, move my gear from the basement uh, up around the yard and to the driveway. Uh, I, the I saw that when you were in the basement. You're like, I'm in the basement. I'm like, oh, my God, you go upstairs and you just walk out of the door. I'm like, oh, my God, I wish I had that. Tracy was watching that with me. She's like. Oh my God, that's that's. She goes, that's so nice. I go, yeah. yeah we don't, I, I don't, we don't wanna, have a basement. I don't want to walk that gear up those steps, but um, no, I, I'll take it. I'll park it right outside the basement door and then drive it around the side of the yard and you know just park it or you know, pull it right up to the back of the vehicle. So uh, it, it, that's you know it, it wasn't bought for that purpose, but. Uh, uh, and the only streets that the golf cart goes on are the neighborhood streets here. Yeah, here usually a lot a lot of towns do only that. And then the other part was. I was actually talking to someone who was at Mix, and I guess they had a um, a person there or a couple companies selling uh, drones, and they were telling people that you can just buy a drone. You don't need any licensing, and I know that you're a licensed FAA qualified drone operator, and this person also is an FAA licensed drone operator. Like, no, if you're charging someone, you have to have a license. So, Jeff, if you want to talk about that for a moment or two, for those people out there grabbing a drone and again taking some shots, which are cool, but if you're charging someone, you have to have an FAA license. And you want to explain a little bit about that very quickly? It'd be greatly appreciated. Yeah, correct. I mean, there are there is a weight limit, uh, and I can't remember how many grams it is, um, but it, and it has changed in the past few years. But um, but basically, there's a weight limit. A very light drone, you do not have to have a license just to fly it around your yard or whatever, wherever you want to take it. Um, if it's heavier than a certain amount, then you do have to have uh, a license. Uh, if you use your drone for any um, activity that you charge someone for, a client for, in other words, if it is part of your business, then you have to you have to have a license to, to operate it. And when you operate it, you have to be the pilot or the the co-pilot and at the co-pilot you have to have two people basically for every drone flight so a lot of rules and regulations and it's not that easy and i would say you know probably half the people actually you know go by the rules and the other half um skirt them in any way possible but yeah it's uh you you can't you can't use a drone. Let, let's say if I wanted to take the, my drone or I, I don't have one, but if I had one and I wanted to take it out um, and shoot a venue, uh, that's part of my business now. That is now part of my uh, DJing activity. So I would technically have to have a license to do that. And I would have to uh, have two people there uh, while I'm flying it, you know, me and one other person, you know, one is the pilot. The other is the, uh, the camera operator slash, uh, lookout basically. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of rules and regulations. So if you're looking to get into drones and again, you want to go to the extra step like Jeff did, uh, he has to do it for his regular professional career, uh, career, as well as, you know, again, if you want to do it for his business, he already has a license been through it. Make sure you go to the FAA's website and look through it. There's a, the rules are on there. It's very plain, simple, but make sure you're following it because the fact that something happens, you're then liable and you don't have a license. It's just like driving a car on the road. You can get yourself some trouble. We don't want no one in trouble. So make sure that you're following the rules, the law and everything, and make sure you're keeping everyone safe. And one of the things also, I guess, I, I again, this is coming third party, but I guess uh, someone was saying that uh 
uh, went up to fly a drone inside of a building. And I'm like, uh, yeah, no one in it, uh, I would probably say, but those blades usually can, uh, can cut. And, uh, Jeff, again, being around drones, especially the ones you use, uh, they have like carbon fiber and stuff like that. Those, those blades are pretty tough. And will cut you. Correct. Yeah, they, they can cut you. Yeah. The, the general rule is you do not fly over people. Um, if, um, if you're flying, uh, close to people like above them, you do not, uh, get near them. Uh, technically you're not supposed to fly above, right, right over any crowd or, or people. Um, so yeah. And yeah, the good thing is that most, uh, new drones these days, uh, will not be able to take off in a, uh, airspace that is regulated by the FAA. So it's, they, they have the GPS, you know, lock on them that will, if you set up outside of an airport, uh, some way, uh, way, shape or form, they, you cannot launch them. So, uh, but some of the older ones do not have that. So. Well, again, we want we want everyone following the rules, but again, that was very interesting to come from Mix. DJ Fire, how are you, sir? Hopefully, I'm good. Central Illinois is safe, uh, unlike up here, which we've had some uh, pretty severe storms going through, including some tornadoes to the west. I, mean, I keep hearing my weather alert radio going off, um, which already had the storms come through in my area, but now I'm just going to wait for snow afterwards. Uh, <laughs> DJ Bradley, speaking of Mix and uh, everything on there. Um, and saying before watching you out there DJing for the Toad Mematic booth, that was fun. Uh, what uh, what else was going on at Mix that uh, caught your eye? Anything that uh, you can say that you were on the floor out there looking and said, "Hey." I mean, the photo booths. There were some of the vintage looking antique style ones I really kind of dug, and there were a ton. I mean. There was the Russians, uh, ver the Russian version of the 360, and probably like six other booths that had 360s in them. And I honestly don't see them as the new trend, so to speak. Uh, you know, with photo booths, and I saw a couple other ones that had newer operating systems in them with the iPad that were really good. But when it came to gear, I really, you know, I wasn't really looking hardcore so i want i did the das stuff is really nice um the rcf stuff they just some of the stuff they just dropped i forget the number series but it was nine something on the subs they had and the column array it was like blowing me out of the water so if i ever have to upgrade again i'm definitely getting another set of those or a set of those from my rc you know upgrading from the rcf side of now uh, LD systems, uh, hopefully the Icoas and White will be back in stock soon. Because he's like, yeah, he, I wasn't the first DJ that asked about them or trying to go from shop to shop finding them. And when I really thought about it, at this point, if I was going to get White subs, I might as well spend the extra 2K and just get a White column array. In again, going back towards RCF. Uh, I got to see like the color key, lighting stuff. Hollywood DJ had a huge show bay display. I mean, enormous. J Maz was there, and I'm really liking a lot of the J Maz lights. The only thing I, I, I like those Galaxy tubes, but I want them to have DMX functionality. And the so, ones that are Steras, they J Maz is making a Stera knockoffs. I don't know if they had them there though. They they uh, but they don't have do they have DMX capability on them? Wireless DMX built in, same kind of specs as okay. the Asterix. They showed them off at NAM. They're not going to be out till March or April, but um they're they're way better than the Galaxy tubes. 3000 bucks for a set of 6. Um it's yeah, it's the closest thing I've seen to an Astera copy. Um Okay. So those I'm interested see, in. But. That was but it actually, you know, I saw it in the tubes there and I'm like, you know, maybe I should. And then I think it was one of your setups, Matt, I was looking at the head tubes in it. In a gig log, and then I happened to stroll on another gig log that had tubes, and I went through a few, and I'm like, no one's got any lights on these. Okay, it's time to change what I'm doing with my lighting configuration, and so I went back to all my pictures I took at Mex, and decided that you know I'm going to have some tubes, and there are the blinder style parkans that JMAS has that I am just absolutely in love with. They're super inexpensive, but they're just so bright. And the functionality of them, what you know, just blew my mind. And knowing I can hook them up in a record box makes everything all the better. 
So that was, you know, my kind of new mindset of it, with it. If I'm doing my premium packages, I'll put these out there with it. If you want the club lights that I can bring along, then yeah, we'll talk about that. But to shrink down my lighting and my this footprint I'm taking up, so to speak, and just have it look more cleaned up and classy. So it might be having a couple of totems with, you know, two wash effect, uh, uh, moving wash heads and six uh, tubes or something similar. But that also changed my mind about even having to buy more up lighting. I'm like, I've got 20. I don't need more if I have tubes that are near the dance floor and my lights around the rest of the room with some control, you know, DMX controlled up lights encompassing the rest of the dance floor. I'm all good. I don't need to go buy more up lights and can properly invest. And these. So that was where I was going with it, you know, and what my lighting configuration oh. generally is what couples are paying for. Like, no one's really asked me to bring out my cra the crazy light show I redid until this last, once I put a couple of that post of it, well, before I left for Vegas, a couple couples have asked me if I can bring that lighting set up out. And I'm like, of course, it's already built and ready to go. But I'm definitely looking to strip down my nicer and classier setups so they look, you know, have a smaller footprint and look a lot cleaner. And I think, you know, even though there's nothing wrong with my Chauvet Slim Powers or anything like that, this look might just be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. And that's one of the things, you know, again, looking forward and going yeah. moving forward, lighting, sound and everything. And that, that's, that's part of the thing going to these shows, be it, you know, uh, mix, be it, uh, uh, here for Marquee or be it uh, for any of the shows out east uh, when they have uh, Harvest of Sound in the fall or you wait till next year and you go back out to California, hook up with uh, with uh, Matt there and go to uh, right by Walt Disney World and uh, go over there and uh, see all the new stuff. And it's 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 I one of the things the, that I'm sorry. I can't let the kid, you know, speaking of shows, uh, Midwest DJs live. I can't totally I can't let the cat out of the bag, but they've gotten some. uh pretty good uh, uh folks to be on the showroom floor this year and they're changing Ooh. the format of it as well can't let that cat out of the bag my business partner is in midwest dj's lot okay. he's on the board when so you I'm, can well it, when you can or if you want to bring him on here and we'll uh tell people what's there going on i'll talk to him about it but yeah um he they've got some really good uh folks for the showroom floor and some great ideas for this year i can't wait and I'm actually trying to prep my submission so I can record it tomorrow or the next day to send to them for the Big Ron spinoff. Cool. So, you know, I know Mr. Uh, Dixon, uh, I know that you follow all the shows, including NAM and everything like that. And you're like me, stuck here in the Midwest. And uh, again, we have Marquee coming up and you're just, you know, what, four and a half, five hours east of me. <laughs> so a little bit of a ride, you know, something you probably stay overnight for. But the thing is that, are you looking at anything? I mean, you said you have some uh you have some stick lights and you have some other stuff. I know you have line arrays, uh, but are you looking to do anything or is there anything exciting you want to do for stuff or anything that you saw at uh Mix or any other show so far that kind of caught your eye? Um, no. I just I finally got a chance to try out the um my I think it's Groove. I think that's how you say it. They have these these curtain lights just to jazz up my um DJ booth. So I at first when I put it on there because it was white against the black, I thought it kind of like looked kind of like eh, cheesy. But once the lights go off, you turn off the house lights and then you let the um uh, light show start with your LEDs. It looks real nice. So that's that's about the only update that I did to my set. Besides getting the, the tubes, I like the tubes because I can just easily plop them down and then with the remote control, control all six and just set it pretty much on the um, sound activation. And one, that gave us a lot of light. One of the things, like you said, with the tubes that I like because I have the Asteras oh. and not cheap, I have a, a, its own tablet for the Asteras and it actually says lights on here because this is for that <laughs> has the software on it, has the app on it. The lights on the Astera's the app make life so easy. Um, the wireless hub that connects to this, it transmits so well. I have tons of video of those lights working, and they just do so much craziness with lighting. It's really, really cool. And I, I really feel that that it versus, you know, a car can't facing someone, 
park hands are of a wa uh, you know it's supposed to be more of a wash light they, they they're basically kind of more blinding people this is a little more indirect of the tube lights and i really feel that they do a lot of things but again you can do indirect lighting with up lighting too you can do indirect lighting on a lot of things and turn the your rack of pars around and bounce off the wall have wall bounce white ceiling bounce off the ceiling onto the floor fill the room up i've done that plenty of times and it always looks awesome I know uh, Matt wants to fill the whole remote light, and that's my goal is to fill the remote light as well as I'm sure everyone here. We want to have that feel when a dance floor opens to have that feel and boom in there. And I know one of the people who has a lot of lights and does a lot of boom, and that's DJ Fire. Now, if you have not seen his videos with his lights, all the moving heads, and he does reviews just like Moose does, just like Hitman does, just like Matt does, just like <laughs> Brentley does. We all do review stuff. And he has he's, he has a lot of great stuff. He has, what, like 12 million channels going on for YouTube. But he has his lawn care. He has his uh, uh, DJ service. He has his review channel, uh, his girlfriend for photography and uh, about stuff that she's doing. So they, he has a lot of channels going on. And he also helps out DJ Mike James, which has been on the show plenty of times. Another great DJ uh, with his videos. And... It's just awesome to see that stuff. So, uh, DJ Fire, uh, Nathan, when you are looking at stuff now, have you seen anything from uh, from Mix that you want to get uh, for uh, one of the one of the companies there and try it out, or have you seen anything that you're like, hey, you know, this might be a cool thing to unbox on uh, the channel, like uh, something from Shad's, like a a tube light of some kind from them, or anything? Well. I don't know if you've seen the channel, but I have gotten a bunch of new stuff lately. Um, so I sold my Intimidator 260s, um, and I bought two of the Intimidator 360Xs. Yep, I which, saw that. Um, they're supposedly supposed to have a new home where they're supposed to be, like, straight, straight on, but they're still facing the side. Uh, when they're in DMX mode, so I don't know if something's just not programmed right there or whatever, but I've only used them on one gig. Uh, it was a Valentine's Day dance that me and the other DJ covered for for Mike, because Mike was DJing for the city of Charleston. Uh, their uh, daddy-daughter dance and stuff, he had two nights of that, so he wasn't unable to do the school event, so he had me and another guy go do that, which if you haven't seen that video... There is a, so I just did the lighting for Mike and the other guy did the sound. He brought in this cheap line array system from ProEc. It's the ProEc 6000. Um, not super impressed with that thing. Um, it's garbage. The guy, that, the, the guy that owns it thinks it's phenomenal. And I was like, ah, nice. that's junk. Mike, Mike has been thinking about getting one, and I'm like, you're wasting no. money to get that. Well, the one thing is that I saw the video you're talking about, and the room, <laughs> it's a gymnasium. It's a big room. It'd be like me taking my uh, my Maui Fives and taking that there. Will it put sound in the room? Sure. Will they get lost? Yes, because the room is so large. You're up on a stage. It's not designed for a large area. The SPL is pretty low. It's not a high SPL speaker. And you're talking like, you know, I think it's like 116, the SPL. You, you could say a million watts for the power consumption. You know, it, it, it's like, you know, how fast can your car go? Well, it gets four miles a gallon. No, that's not how you do it. it. It doesn't matter the wattage. It matters how much sound's putting out. And 116 is not bad, but like the Mali 5s are 120. You know, the, the RCF J8s are like 130. So there is differences between them. You know, Matt's speakers he has are like, you know, 136. You know, so it, it, there's, a, there's a difference between 130 and 136 dB. Those 6 dB is a lot of sound. So I'd probably say, again, if he likes the sound, he's happy with it, God bless. Would I pick that for that big of a room? No. I would have picked like your sound system or like your, your Eon's. As subwoofer, something like that's got a little more throw, a little more cast. But again, every DJ does things differently. And I, I, would I recommend those speakers? Well, I think there's better ones. But the reason why Mike kind of let him go do the sound part of it is because he's, you know, um, doesn't get a whole lot of gigs. And I can understand why after I've never seen his actual setup. Like he had a DJ controller there, and I actually filmed a bunch of his setup. 
but because it was so garbage and I figured he would watch my video, I didn't put it actually in the video. I was just like, so we had a table in there with a red scrim on it. And instead of buying a table that, you know, was tall enough, he had little things you used to prop your furniture up higher under it. And I was like, oh my gosh. Hey, like, if you don't knock that, I, I use, um, there's these things called, I have two different rising systems. I have liftyourtable.com. They make legs that bring a regular table up to like a 36 inch height. And then I also have, um, they look like bed risers, but they're, yeah, basically like furniture risers, but I hide mine under a tablecloth, but basically that way I don't have to bring a table or a tablecloth to any venue that I go to. I just rely on them. It says in my contract, six foot table. If it has little pole legs, I just stick my little pole risers under there. If it has weird square legs, I just stick the risers under there and we're good to go. Uh, right. If you don't scrim it or like put a tablecloth, yes, it looks tacky as hell. He had he had a scram, but it was kind of like it had like a little arch kind oh, of. Oh yeah, those are bad. So like it didn't come. I was like, oh, of course it was dark, you know. It, you got to get yeah, it was, if you're gonna. It's also it's also a cheap gig. I mean, I think Mike only gets like maybe two two fifty for that gig. I mean, I understand it's only two hours, but, but it's 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 um, a kids it's a kids dance. You're you're not going to make millions. Yeah, of and it's it's a school dance. gig. Which I actually picked up my first high school homecoming dance this year i actually have two of them booked so uh well it's not till the fall but one of them um it's a school they do have fire alarm systems and i am actually good friends with a firefighter in that town and i think he's gonna come the day i'm setting up which is the day before and i think he's gonna do a walkthrough and uh check the sensors on the uh gym and maybe kind of either tone the sensitivity down or deactivate those so i can use fog so that's awesome um and I, I think i'm gonna rock it rock the um rock that dance but um other than lighting i am going to get another at least one maybe three more uh wash effects hexes those things are phenomenal if you haven't seen those i just uh, picked two of them up just shine those up at a ceiling um those things i mean you could use it for crowd blinders if you were like outside and wanted to light up the crowd like if you were doing lighting for a band or something i mean that that would be fine if they're up high enough but those things can blind like no doubt you're getting, um, you're getting mad lighting, excited <laughs> i i have a i have a purpose for them i'm, I'm basically going to stick one on the top of each of my gravity stands and underneath it have my blinders um that if you saw my instagram stuff this weekend i got some led blinders that are four channels so there's actually like some program built into them and then i i have some like cool stuff where it'll you know burst and then slowly fade out and then i've got some like pulse strobing and some like actual strobing with them they're really cool and a blinder is such a unique effect that like no other light besides a blinder style can do and i've always been big on blinders so really quickly I actually, uh, Matt, Matt, watch I've been watching your, I think I've watched it three times now. Your video you did with the, the bar lights from both lighting. Do you like those? I haven't used them in a gig yet. I just, uh, I was contractually obligated to review those. Um, I, I want to, the problem is even in 14 channel mode, there's three different auto program, auto program speed, brightness and strobe rate for each thing. So it's like, it's a lot to program to do all the cool effects, but there's a lot of possibilities. I just, I I'm thinking of how I want to use them because the battery powered is, is really clutch. But at the same time, like I think the little LEDs that are colored on the sides look tacky. I think they look cheap. Um, they're kind of like, I mean, they're, they're like SMD LEDs. They're not like your warm, like wash effects style LEDs where they're actually richer in contrast they're just they're I just really the reason why bright. i'm asking is i just sold my bar lights that shed sent me to uh y'all remember the gig logs they did last year helping the church that just started destination church well they mm -hmm. actually were supposed to re um do this one building and turn it into a church well apparently that didn't work through the architect dropped the ball or something so they actually were able to rent or rent to own or something in a new church and he was wanting some lighting for the stage so i was like i don't really use these bar lights that often so i sold them to him but i would like to replace them with something that i can put on you know trussing on my you know when i'm running moving heads on top of totems and just to have something to wash the dance floor um, but i don't know what i want i was just watching that video because i think the, the little the little lights around the outside of it and then you got the other lights and the strobe effects kind of cool um 
I am I am seriously thinking about getting Sound Switch. I've been watching DJ Daryl's videos and and uh I've been talking to Rick Webb a lot. Um he says he has a profile already for all their both lighting stuff, but I don't the only thing that I have from both lighting is up lights, but um yeah. So I'm I'm still debating on I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff. I do have some stuff coming that'll be here Thursday from Sheds. Um, I did find out that their 12 watt and 6 watt uh, lasers, their newest ones. I think Matt, you have one. Uh, I did find out they are illegal in the United States to use. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, you gotta I, get I, FDA uh, approval on the high power <laughs> lasers. So, Matt, really quickly, I, I know you're talking about your booth in the last um, a gig log. Uh-huh. And it's basically the same kind of similar as a background for a photo booth. Do you have the information for that? That uh, if I ask you, can you send it to me so I could put it into the chat below? Because I thought that um, was really cool. Yes, it's custom though. So I, I basically went to the person that does my photo booth backdrops and said, hey, can you do this for me with these dimensions and make covers for them? And uh, they do. So what what, what was the uh, I don't have they run in? Um, it was pretty cheap. I think it was like only for the frame and the cover was like 150, I think. Oh, and each, oh, that's... each cover is like 50 bucks shipped. So that's... basically just, you know, they have a full, uh, not shutter stock, maybe the shutter stock, whatever the giant one that has everything image wise, they have just a giant license. So she said, Oh, you know, if you same thing with my photo booth backdrops, she said, any image you find anywhere, like send it to us. We'll see if we can find it on Shutterstock and do it like backdrop style. So oh, cool. um, pretty endless possibilities. So I, it's it's something I've been kind of pitching to clients of like, if you have a specific look for your wedding, like we could totally match that with our DJ booth instead of just white, black, or, uh, you know, I, I've been kind of using the geometric pattern one lately, but I've got it in marble and then like a, a wood, like a herringbone pattern with wood. And then one more that's like a um, kind of like a luxury pillowy style. Yeah, that, that looked that looked pretty cool, and you could hide a table behind her, which I kind of liked. I'm like, hmm. and it's sturdy. It's very sturdy because it's not like uh, it's, it doesn't fold like a facade, so like you don't have to worry about it just falling over. It's lightweight, but it's it's rock sturdy, and it's it's big. The only problem is I probably went a little too small because with a six foot table, I can't really get speaker stands in there if I have subwoofers underneath. So uh, I did though also purchase some of those uh, round base gravity stand speaker stands. Um, there's a different company. If here, you could put this in the chat. There's a company called Toman Music, T-H-O-M-A-N-N. They're in Germany and all of their pricing on gravity stuff is way cheaper than you. So like, it's you can like, get- it, it's like uh, there's a couple other copies. You can buy stuff from, from Germany and pay for importing. Yeah. And it's, and it it's, it's cheaper, cheaper than buying here. Yeah, so I, I got a bunch from them. I got two black ones, two white ones, and all the bags and covers for like six hundred bucks. Well, so, when you get when you uh, get a chance to send me the information, you know how to send it to me, and I'm gonna put it down in the chat for the the show for people to go do it. And uh, I, I I told Tracy I'd like to get one. And when I find the price out for me, when I tell it's one hundred and fifty bucks, one hundred and sixty dollars, yeah. whatever with tax and shipping, whatever. The only the only thing I'll say is. It is a lot of pieces. Um, the way that they send it to you with your photo booth stuff, a lot of the pieces are strung together. With this, they're not so much, but I think it's just because of the bag because you could just get a bigger bag and string a bunch of pieces together. The bag is only maybe 24 inches wide, I want to say. Um, so if you get like a three or four foot bag, you could put a lot of the pieces together and <laughs> set up time because it takes me a good like five minutes to actually set it up. And half of that's just finding the numbers that match okay. up. Um, but I've also only put it together twice, so that's also on. Me. Okay, that's cool. So, so I, speaking, I've got a, speaking I've of got cool, a quick question. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So um, before reason why I didn't get on right when the show first started, I was I was enjoying my Jersey Mike subs. I've been working at our church. We've been painting and stuff in our new building. So I ate dinner late. So I was watching on actual Twitch before I joined on. Saw you guys talking about drones, Jeff. Um, you were talking about. Um, what type of drone stuff do you do? Do you just like when someone hires you, you just go out and do like what, like real estate stuff, or what are you doing with your drone stuff? I I don't do drone anymore. Um, I my license has technically uh, expired because you have to renew it every two years. Um, yep. But what I did was for a local TV station, so we would fly for. 
uh, news for commercial purposes, uh, commercial oh, clients, okay. different things. So that's, uh, I just, I just got my part one Oh seven. Um, I've got some, I wasn't going to get it. And some people around here started finding out I had drones and we're like, Hey, we'll pay you to come shoot this stuff. And I was like, well, technically you need to get licensed for it. So I did. The test was, I'm not going to lie, pretty tricky, but I passed it. Um, so I got my stuff and all the paperwork and all that. And, um, so I don't know if you've heard, but there is a deal going through the upper hands of the legislation trying to ban DJI drones. I don't think it's going to pass, but if it does, that means none of our drones are going to be good. We're not going to be able to use them, anything DJI related. Um, now, there is a guy, those of you that use drones for your gig logs or for your DJ, you know, there's some people that, you know, want drone stuff. Like I've actually... Uh, the one wedding I did that I did for a, a relative last year, um, he asked me to bring my drone because he's like, you won't be really DJing much while we're taking pictures. And I'm like, no, not really. He's like, well, you can do some aerial shots of us, you know, and fly around and stuff. So I did. I mean, I did it for free, but I stuck those in my video. Now, from what I've learned, uh, you, so you were talking about weight limit. 49 gram or 249 grams and under, you do not have to register with the FCC and the FAA from what I've been told. Anything 250 grams and over, which mine are registered, uh, are registered. Mine also has the, um, what do you call it, tag deal on it so they can track that thing any given time. What do they call that? Um, the GPS? Some sort. Uh, it's, it's a um, are you something about the new... It's something new they've come out with. It's basically a deal that you put on. Like, it's almost like a deal so they can look on a map and be like, okay, there's Nathan. He's down there in Charleston flying his drone, and it's at, it's at 300 feet. You know, they can – in any given time, they can see where that drone is. But if, if you guys want – and a lot of information I have found out, there's a guy on YouTube. Uh, I can't remember his name. He goes by 51 Drones. Um, and he makes a lot of great drone stuff, tech stuff. He reviews drones. He's got several drone companies that sponsor him. Uh, DJI sends him stuff. Uh, Master Airscrew, which actually just 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 contacted me the other day and are sponsoring some videos. So I've got a bunch of stuff for Master Airscrew coming. Um, but I mean, this this guy is pretty knowledgeable with with the drone stuff i mean drones are cool but that you need to be able to be smart about them you know just because the drone can go several thousand feet in the air doesn't necessarily mean to put it because um like i was flying the other day taking some aerial shots at our new church building uh so we could put on the website and stuff but so my controller tells me that there was a aircraft in the area and of course i looked up and i could see there was a passenger plane but he was probably thirty thousand feet in the air i'm only at maybe 100 feet in the air or 70 feet in the air but um if you guys are using drones on your youtube channels uh that are not monetized legally you can do that as long as your channel's not i mean you're, you're putting the drone footage on there you're not monetized but once that channel becomes monetized then you definitely want to get your part 107 drones are cool um and that's another reason why I don't think that ban's going to go through is because even with the 51 drones guy, he said um, that uh, drones save lives. Uh, there was actually uh, shooting four houses down for me two nights ago, and they were using these really high expensive drones from the state police to locate the shooter. And um, the guy that got shot, they were actually able to find him locate him and give him medical attention i know there's been people that's like had dementia they've wandered off from their home they use drones to find them uh people that get lost people that need medical attention drones ain't always necessarily a bad thing but you know i those of you djs that use them definitely use them wise and don't 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 get yourself in trouble because I know there's several people that do use them and it's got themselves. In no, trouble. We, we, we want no one get any kind of trouble. Make sure you follow the rules, regulations and the laws, whatever you're at, whatever country you're in or whatever state or County municipality, 
make sure you follow the rules of it's kind of like follow the rules of the road. Speaking of follow the rules of the road, I know it's been a little bit a long road to get there, but uh, <laughs> we got to go to Terry down in Texas. There, <laughs> Terry, got a question for you. Yes, sir. Did you see sure. stuff at Mix? And if so, is there anything that caught your eye on some of the videos out there, or are you going to do like DJ Brentley and get a Totematic uh, booth and uh, run around with one of those? Well, <laughs> no, I think I'm just going to stick with what I got. Because um, I know you, I know you like to play Tetris, loading your SUV up. So yeah. I, you have, yeah, you, I always you see you do that. So you always say it's time for Tetris, and you and you do that, and you load up your vehicle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm pretty much stuck on the the um, table I got. I, I really like it because it only takes me. Uh, it took me about 10 seconds to set it up because everything's on the table. All I do is drop it in the drop it in the facade and plug it in and I'm ready to go and put the stand on and I'm done. So I I like it a lot. Did you did, I get did a lot you, of compliments? Did you see anything at Mix? Did you watch any of the videos from Mix or anything like that about the stuff going out there? Uh, or no, DJ no. Gary thing? No, I don't know. I don't like to watch gear stuff. I don't. No. Oh man. See, no. I, I drool <laughs> over that stuff. It's like it's like Christmas for me. Like, ooh, Nam, ooh, mix, ooh, <laughs> ooh. Who else is next? Ooh. I, 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 I'm a gear hound. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I like, I like, I like tool gear, cool gear, and cool stuff. You know. But um, are you looking to uh, upgrade a little bit with lighting a little bit, or are you going to stick with the lighting you have now? Oh, I'm going to get. I'm going to get. Um... I'm gonna get uh, another pack of up lights. Um, I have like a prom that I'm gonna do, but a lot of my events, like Mud Girl, all I do is bring my DJ controller. Everything's there in Mud Girl. I just bring the DJ controller and my laptop, and then and then set up in ten seconds, and then and then bring my library, and then uh, I got a bunch of other events. I like got Halloween. Halloween, I set up. Um, I just picked up the All Timers event forever down here. I'm doing a All Timers car uh, car show this weekend, so I was, a lot of my stuff is pretty much outside. So besides the prom, which is going to be in a barn, so I can't bring no fog, I can't bring no fire, and I can't bring none of that. So it's just. The barn live down here. When you when they say a barn, they literally mean a barn. And when you go in the barn, it's like holding up my twigs. <laughs> oh, I there's 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 plenty of venues like that here that yeah. uh, you can still smell the um, animals that were in there at one time. I'm sure oh, uh, Nathan's got that down by him. Uh, some of those barn venues, it's like. <laughs> Do I do I see still see hay in the corner there? You know, it's like, hmm, because what, it's what's like, wrong with having animals at your wedding? <laughs> no, no, there's nothing. I'd love to bring my dog with me. Uh, she would probably love and to then, go. And and then what I try to do is I use the light. Now I do um, I do the deaf school, I do the blind school, and I do a couple other schools that have uh, restrictions. So I can't have any flashing lights at all. So I don't flash lights at any of my events. Besides the moving heads, they're the only things that move around. Well, it looks like we lost Terry for a second here. Let's give him a second. <laughs> the, wonders of, the wonders of the interwebs. Um, there we go. We got you so back. I've got, uh, what do you call it? Um, a lot, you know, the last few weddings that he was talking about strobing. I've had some people ask me, you know, not to strobe stuff. I mean, that's starting to get kind of more popular. People asking not for the strobe, which I can understand epileptic and stuff. Um, now I don't know how that strobing part works. If if you have to hit the the strobe light has to hit them just right, or just just seeing the light flex flash can put them into. A seizure. I don't. I need to find out more about that. But 
Does anybody know how a strobe light can make someone go into? It's a, a frequency of the or... light, and it affects their their nervous system. That's that's one of, that's one of the things. It's a it's a couple different things depending on what the uh, the problem is with them. But uh, one of the things is the frequency and how it hits them. And some people it's it's color. Some people it's uh, you know the lights. It's their going... sensitivity level they have. Yeah. Some so people it's... like my son Robert. He has a lot of sensitivity levels. If you touch him. He'll touch you back where you touched him. So if you touch him on an arm, he'll touch you back. And sometimes he'll say, ow. So it just depends on just depends on um, certain certain uh, attributes of the Asperger's and all that stuff. I could do a whole hour of that. Yeah, and that's the thing. Someone, if you want to be conscious of people with special needs and you know, make sure that you talk and communicate that with, Whoever is hiring you, your couple, your cor the corporation, school, whatever event you're doing. And I know that, uh, Jeff, you take a lot of uh, care about that. And Dwayne does, too, because Dwayne, uh, being a teacher, he understands that it's around that. And he takes care of that. I know uh, Jeff does, too. And I know, Matt, you have had uh, clients have asked you uh, not to do that because of uh, medical conditions. And I think we've all run into that. And, you know, Brentley, I'm sure uh, yeah. Nathan has as well. Uh, and that's, that's, that's a normal thing. After. <laughs> no. We have it in our contract that we're going to use strobe lights, and uh, it's their responsibility to let us know ahead of time. Um, I've only ever had once where somebody was like, oh, my God, can you not strobe? My friend has whatever. And I didn't for like 10 minutes. But after that, I'm like, like, this is part of my show. Like, I can't you not I can't I can't sacrifice the client not getting what they want just because you, you know, I'm not going to accommodate for you. So uh, maybe that's just me being a dick, but uh, can, you know, can, you can you get in trouble for putting someone into a seizure? If say, I've never say, had it happen. That hmm. would be, that would be a question to talk to a lawyer and numbers. I don't know anyone here. I don't think anyone here is a, a uh, past the bar and as a lawyer who has done uh, uh, injury uh, law. So I would have to definitely defer that to a uh, injury law. I'm sure. I'm sure the family of the person you put in hell could probably try to sue you, which that's why you, we're all. You injured. could you could sue anyone for anything at any time. That's the thing about yeah. the United States. A couple quick things here. Um, Want to go through comments from last week's show. Uh, first thing first, uh, Mike. Uh, I was talking about this before, Mike. I know you're saying that uh, it's not an Apple phone; it's an iPhone. Uh, it's Apple owns the phone. It's Apple's product. iPhone's the model. So when I say Apple phone, I mean all their phones. And, you know, I know it's iPhone is their model, iPhone 5, iPhone 10, iPhone 25, whatever it is. That's their, you know, their branding of the product, but it's, yeah, it's an Apple brand of phone. Just like Samsung has a phone, just like, you know, um, Motorola has a phone. Everybody has a phone. It's Android's operating system and they have a model number. But, you know, it's also one of the things I like to tease you guys who are Apple guys, too. So <laughs> it, it's all down by love, brother. Uh, the other thing also, he was talking about uh, when we're, we're talking about last week about pictures and photographs uh, that he uh, has a right in his contract as well to be allowed to take pictures and video and post them to his social media accounts um, and check the um he checks the videos and stuff like that, make sure everything is okay, and then posts it to Facebook and so forth and so on. So he has it in his contract. And then DJ Aga was saying that he and his daughter are talking about it, and they're going to put a uh, blurb in their contract saying that the uh, the person that signed the contract is authorizing uh, video and pictures and so forth for social media. And again, that's not a bad thing to have. Uh, I know some people, uh, they have signs up on their booths saying that, you know, we're videotaping, recording. I know uh, the gig log, Jeff was talking, he showed, uh, he was talking to someone and, and uh, he's like, yeah, I got a camera behind you. Um, you know, so, you know, it's one of the things he does that stuff. Uh, like most people, you know, you want to capture and show future clients what you could do. And YouTube's a great place to do that on. And, you know, again, I get to watch some really great DJs do some really great gig logs, including Matt with his DJ horn pointing up to the sky, <laughs> goes black and white, you know. <laughs> you should just yeah. wait till you hear all the samples I have on my Rain 4 now. I've uh, got a DJ Khaled sample, the Taco Bell Bell. I've got all sorts of fun ones. It, when, the when, the taco, uh, when the taco bar opens as you hit the bell, 
And exactly. tell me what run for the border. I got some from I got Pitbull, I got Lil John in there. We're we're gonna we're going crazy with samples. Oh, there you go. That's that's the fun part about stuff. But you mm -hmm. know, it, it's one of the things that uh it, it's 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 in informing your clients of what you're doing is not a bad or horrible thing. It's a great thing having that communication with them. And I definitely would say that, you know, anyone here, um, they I all know. have, and I hope that you are communicating with your couples, your customers, corporations, t uh, schools, teachers, principals, whoever's hiring you. It doesn't matter if they're parking in a backyard, if it's a quinceanera, if it's a bar mitzvah what, or a bar mitzvah or whatever the event is that you're covering, that you're explaining to people, you know, beforehand saying, hey, you know what, I take pictures um, you know, I'm going to post it to my social media and I'll tag you, you know, the next day or whatever you decide to do, but at least you're at least acknowledging and telling that. And again, most people these days know that people post stuff to uh, social media. So here is the yes or no question really quickly for tonight, um, which I'm going to go around the room very quickly. I'm going to start with Jeff tonight. Uh, Jeff, uh, really quickly uh, with, the start of the you know, busier season coming on. I know you guys, some of the guys have gun gigs already and stuff like that. Are you seeing 2024 shape up to be a good year so far? Um, yes. Good, 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 good. Matt is 2024 shaping up so far to be a good year for you. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, just booked number 70 for weddings. Uh, I got a bunch more corporate stuff, some repeat clients. So, uh, some bar bat mitzvahs coming in too. I uh four years ago referral from four years ago, so I'll take it. Uh actually five years ago now. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh it's shaping up. People are taking longer to to make decisions for their vendors, but people are they're either right away or they're taking a while. I it's all over the place. So oh, good. So far, good. we're we're doing okay. Glad to hear you're in business. Mr. Dixon, are you uh, shaping up for a good 2024? Yep, so far. I'm getting a lot of return customers or um, people referring me to people, and I'm getting bookings from past jobs I did this past year. Good. Good for you. Terry, over there in Texas, how is your 2024 so far looking? So far, so good. Is a thumbs up, thumbs down? Man, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. It is a thumbs up, good definitely. Year. All right, DJ Brantley, Wisconsin. I know he has a lot of bar gigs, but the the other gigs that he does, the corporate and the event gigs, uh, hopefully you're doing well for 2024. Am I correct on that, sir? You're muted. You're muted. Still. You're muted. Got it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm doing pretty well, actually. I want to think anyway. I've got one Saturday left for 2024 I'm willing to part with. And maybe three or four Fridays that I'm willing to part with. And, you know, that are for weddings, that is. So I can maintain a certain integrity of my club schedule. Uh, when it comes to Green Bay, I'm waiting on the release of the NFL schedule or any hints of it to finish kind of mapping out end of October, November, December, and January of next year. Good, good. And one other thing also, if, 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 you want a DJ Brantley sticker, make sure you send him an Instagram, a message. You send me your information, ask for a sticker from him, take a picture of that sticker, tag him in that picture of where you put that sticker at, on the back of your computer, on a notebook, on your window of your, of your vehicle, whatever, where you're at, just in basic city. Hey, I'm in Dallas, Texas, or I'm in Los Angeles, California. You're going to give me the exact address. Do that and tag DJ Brantley and show that his love is all around the country. And if you go international, hey, God bless, you're from another country. Go ahead and uh, tag him in Instagram, ask for a sticker. Uh, okay, now if DJ Fire, what about you, sir? How's your 2024 shape up? You said you got two proms. Any other gigs you got coming up as well for 2024? Is it good, looking like a good year? Uh, as of now, I've got... Just the two things. It doesn't look like my um, unforgettable prom for the um, ones that I've done the last two years. It doesn't look like that's going to happen this year, that the church is not going to do it. Apparently, they're trying to save money, um, which I don't know how they're trying to save money. That church has gobs of money. 
Um, and to me, it kind of hurt my feelings because I know a lot of those special needs kids love that. And now that they've taken that away from them, that's going to devastate them because they probably look forward to that at least once a year. Well, hopefully, but, hopefully, maybe some things change. Maybe a donation comes in or something. And what what church well, is that? That's the home church here in Charleston. They've got money. Uh, see, Daryl, the one that started the new church, used to be the one that did all that, you know, did all the reach out and, and paid for all this stuff. Well, now that he's not there, they've got someone else in charge. And she's like, no, we're cutting back. Uh, we're They're trying to put money. They're still spending the money. It's just they're putting it in other places. And it's like, you don't understand. That's That prom was huge. I mean, yeah, you spend a lot of money on decorations and, and food and all that. And there was no really no money returned because it wasn't like buy tickets and all this stuff. But, I mean, if, if that is part of they're, – they're wanting to put the money from the prom – into what they call for Charleston. They're trying to put money into EIU and, fun, you know, and different kind of things and be able to help because they help, you know, if you have problems paying your rent or you have problems paying a bill, you can go to the church, you fill out some paperwork, they'll pay your bill for you. So they're, I mean, I think not last year, but the year before, I want to say they gave Charleston and, and families and people, I want to say over $3 million they shelled out to this community. That's, um, not, that's not a little bit of business. money. Worked, that's, that's a good amount. Yeah, and I mean, I did the prom last year. I've always done it just to help him. I've done it, be, you know, for like five hundred bucks just to help him out. And last year, Daryl gave me an extra five hundred, so I made a thousand off of it. Um, so I mean, it was kind of like, um, you know, there was extra money there, and then I was questioned why I got so much, and I'm like, hey, I didn't. You know, I gave him a price and he gave me the extra. Now that he's gone, they're cutting back. So I, I actually told him, I met with him today and told him they wasn't having the problem. He's like, you're kidding me, right? And I was like, no, they're they're not having it. And he's like, oh, that's going to devastate those kids. And I'm like, yep. Well, Another thing they told me that if they did have it, they were going to have their sound guy for the church DJ it. And I'm like, he's not a DJ. He's a sound guy for the church. And I'm like, you guys don't have any lighting other than what's on the stage. And it's pointing, pointing towards the stage, not out where the dance floor would be. So I don't know. Well, hopefully that may but, change. And I you mean, know, it like, could. But yeah, you never know. God works in mysterious ways, you know. And again, it's a church. Does. I mean, I'm sure I'll get some gigs here and there. I'm sure some stuff will come up. It just. It depends. I got a lot of lighting companies that's contacted me wanting me to do product review videos, which honestly I've noticed my product review videos and a lot of you probably, if you do product reviews for any type of DJ equipment, they're going to get the most views. I mean, some of my gig logs do really good, like my prom videos, they did pretty good. Some of my bigger weddings, they've done pretty good, but a majority of my views come from my product reviews of DJ lighting. And make sure you go through all his channels. Again, he has like in a ton of channels and they're all the long hair channel, which is getting ready to take off doing, we're getting ready to start moving into spring stuff. Uh, I do have a drone channel. I've got three different videos I'm working on for that. Um, I've got some cool cell phone tower guys working up 250 feet in the air, putting up a new cell phone tower. That one's going to be cool. Uh, there is a town in Illinois called Casey. Illinois, they've got uh, some stuff that's in the Genesis Book of World Records for it being the biggest in the world. There's a giant rocking chair. There's all different kinds of stuff. So I've got some ground footage and drone footage and, and all the stuff of that. So that video is going to be coming out. Um, of course, I've got some really cool products coming out. DJ related, home stuff related. Um, you have a lot, you have a lot going on. You have a lot, a lot of uh, irons in the fire, a lot of stuff going so on. If, so Make sure if you follow you seen, his channel. Make if you sure see one of my channels getting more videos than the other, it's just because I've got so many channels. I've got to pick and choose when I wake up in the morning. Hey, what channel am I going to work on videos for today? Am I going to work on DJ Fire, New Horizon, the product review channel? I've I've almost got to pick and choose what channel I want to work on that day. And that's the, that's the thing you have to it, you got a lot of stuff going on. So again, make sure you follow all his channels. Make sure you follow everyone's channel here. We gotta go here. And we're already over on our time, but I want to thank you all for tuning in and watching a great episode and a great show. Hopefully you learned something tonight. And go Bears. I see you, Adrian E. Go White Sox. 
Uh, Brett, he's going to say, go Pack, go. He's a Packers fan now. We lost him, but he's also a Cubs fan too. So, but we love him. We he's still. I'm still, nice. give my, I'm still giving my brother a hug. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go out to Terry this time for saying goodbye and good night. Terry, take it away for tonight. Uh, thanks for watching. Peace out. There we go, guys. Thank you all for watching. Bye.